Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia, home of the Melodias. My name's Azalea and today I'm gonna be bringing you guys the update to my Wind Witch Speedroid deck. So without any further ado, let's just jump right into this. So starting off, we're of course gonna be playing with our Wind Witch engine, which, which uh, of course consists of uh, three copies of Wind Witch Ice Bell, which allows you to tutor out your uh, one of your two copies of Wind Witch Glass Bell, which in return allows you to search out one of your two copies of Wind Witch Snow Bell. Now, the reason why I play the ratios as they are, three copies of Ice Bell is pretty standard. You need them uh, in order to start the combo. Now, uh, Glass Bell is here at two because of the fact that you don't really want three. You don't want to draw into her in your first turn, uh, like ever, because the fact that you want to uh, preserve your normal summons for things like your speedroid monsters. So two copies of Glass Bell is completely fine in my opinion. And then we also have two copies of Snow Bell. Now, most people run one if they're just running the Wind Witch engine for Crystal Wing, but because of the fact that we're also playing speedroids, uh, Snow Bell is live more often than not, and having her protection effect once you synchro away with her is actually very very valuable for a lot of your plays. All right, so that does it for the Wind Witch engine. Next off, we're gonna go into the Speedroids. So for the Speedroids, starting off, we are of course playing one copy of Speedroid Terra Top, right? It's the searcher for the deck. Unfortunately, it's still limited at one, but what can you do, right? Now, in conjunction with uh, the Speedroy Terratop, you also have three copies of Speedroy Takatomborg. Now, Takatomborg is here because it allows you to tutor out all of your tuners from your deck, right? It allows you to tutor out um, all of your things from Denden, Daiko Duke, all the way to Red Eye Dice, but we'll get into that in just a bit. Uh, three copies of Takatom Borg uh, because the fact that, well, it's one of the best enablers for your special summons because the fact that if you just control Wind Monster, you can special summon it out from your hand. Um, but keep in mind that if you do use this effect, you're restricted to summoning Wind Monsters only for the rest of the turn. So that is something to be wary of. Okay, so for the other Speedroid monsters, we are playing uh, one copy of Speedroid Double Yo-Yo, and then we're also playing two copies of Speedroid uh, Horse Stilts. Now, I changed the ratios of this up from last time. Uh, I cut Yo-Yo down from two to one because the fact that I found that I was opening with it way too often, and I really didn't want that. Um, I prefer opening with something like Horse Stilts because Horse Stilts allows you to, of course, summon more stuff out from your hand, which allows you to put your tuners on board and go for your synchro plays. Now, Double Yo-Yo's at one, because it's searchable, one, and also you can easily recover it from the graveyard, so you can always use it more than once throughout the duel. But double yo-yo is great for like mid to late game where you can just normal summon it, bring back something like your Terra Top from your graveyard, go for some searches, go for Takatom Borgs, things like that. So I found that double yo-yo was okay at one. Uh, I just really like the horse stilts at two here because the fact that, well, not only because you can banish it from the graveyard, send stuff from your deck to your graveyard, uh, which is great utility, but also just because it allows you to tutor out stuff from your hand, which would have otherwise been dead. Dead. All right, so moving on, we have some of our Speedroid Tuner Monsters. I mentioned a couple of the names earlier, but let's go in depth on them here. So we're playing two copies of Speedroid Denden Daiko Duke, two copies of Speedroid Tri-Dye Dice. We're also playing three copies of Speedroid Red-Eye Dye. And then we're also playing two copies of Speedroid Domino Butterfly. Now, these are all the tuners uh, for the Speedroids in this deck, and I play two of each. Um, I feel like this ratio is really, really good because of the fact that, well, Denden Daiko Duke is great utility. It allows you to banish itself from the graveyard to special summon another Speedroid tuner, either from your hand or from your graveyard, which is obviously just great utility for the deck in order to get tuners on board for you to go ahead and synchro climb. Um, and we also have two copies of Triad Dice, uh, two copies of Red Eye Dice. Red Eye Dice can help you modify the levels of your speedroids, so you can go for you know various uh, level synchros. And then Triad Dice actually comes in handy because it's graveyard effect. It's kind of like a Necro Gardener where you can banish it and you negate the next attack that your opponent declares, uh, which is really good utility. So Denden Daiko Duke can bring these guys um, out from your hand or the graveyard, so it's okay if you draw into some of these. Now, playing one of each is kind of risky because sometimes you, you, know, you do need the utility because you're running three copies of Takatom Borg to be able to summon these out from your deck whenever you need them. Uh, we're also playing two copies of uh, Domino Butterfly here, and this is something new that I've added in, and I really, really love this card. So it has the pendulum effect where you can discard a uh, wind monster 
and then you can um, target one of your banished wind monsters and just add it to your hand. Uh, and I'll, I'll get into one of the texts that I play that allow you to basically add literally any wind monster from your uh, graveyard back to your hand with this card, uh, which is fantastic. Now it's also a level two tuner. Um, it doesn't really come up too often. You're almost never summoning this. This is really only used in the pendulum scale because the fact that red eyed dice can already modify levels on the field. Um, but if you do ever need, or if you're in a pinch, you can always summon this from your deck with something like Takatom Borg, because uh, it's a level two tuner. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, uh, keep in mind that we don't pendulum summon in this deck. I don't play the other scale, the other pendulum monster for speedroids, uh, because it just never comes up. It's really inconsistent. But I really do love the recovery effect of the um, Domino Butterfly, because the fact that, well, you have Denden Deco Duke that can already banish itself from your graveyard, and you have Horse Stills that banishes itself from the graveyard too. So Domino Butterfly is more likely than not going to be live because of just those two cards. But we'll get into uh, another interaction it has with this deck in just a bit. All right, guys, so the secret tech in this deck, the one that's worked so well with uh, Speedroid Domino Butterfly, and uh, one of my favorite cards in this deck, to be honest, is gonna be three copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit. And I only have one copy here, the, the other two are proxied, but if you don't know what Garuda does, you can just banish one wind monster from your graveyard and special summon this out from your hand. So it's just a free special summon, uh, which is really nice because Speedroids are kind of reliant on their normal summon for things like Horse Stills or Double Yo-Yo. Even if you draw into Glass Bell, you're gonna be normal summoning that as well well, uh, and just having multiple ways of getting more wind monsters on your side of the field not only allows you to climb into links, but it also puts more levels on board so you can manipulate them uh, to get the synchro monsters that you want. Now, the great thing about this and its interaction with a uh, domino butterfly is that um, Garuda can banish literally any wind monster from your graveyard. You can banish something like Ice Spell, you can banish Hand Traps as well, and then Domino Butterfly can add any of the banished wind monsters back to your hand. So you can be adding things like your Ice Spell, Glass Spell, uh, Snow Bells, um, any of your speedroid monsters, like Double Yo-Yos, um, back to your hand with this. So this interaction actually came up a lot in my playtesting duels, and I really, really love it. Um, I haven't seen anyone really discuss this, but this is an interaction that I found, and I found to be very, very useful. So so that's just something I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, Garuda is really good in this deck. Um, three copies, definitely mandatory in my opinion because you can't search him. So if you draw into him, it's fantastic. But if you don't, hey, you can still do your normal plays, right? But three copies of Garuda, absolutely amazing. All right, so moving on from the monsters into the hand traps, we're playing three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and we're also playing three copies of Droll and Lockbird. Now, when I mentioned hand traps earlier, Droll and Lockbird's a wind monster, so if your Garuda goes ahead and banishes a copy of Droll and Lockbird from your graveyard, then you can activate the effect of your Speedroid Domino Butterfly, and then you can add that Droll and Lockbird back to your hand and basically lock your opponent out of searching on their next turn. So it's a really great interaction. Uh, it came up a few times times in testing, which is pretty nice, but um, you know, it's just something to keep in mind that this deck has a lot of uh, hidden little syn synergistic plays that you can make. Um, but yeah, three copies of Droll, three copies of Ash Blossom I found to be really nice, especially because this deck can potentially OTK on your uh, second turn because you have access to things like spe uh, High Speed or Chambara in your extra deck, uh, which puts a lot of damage on board, a lot of pressure on your opponent. Um, Droll and Lockbird is actually fantastic here. And of course, Ash Blossom is just a very generic uh, monster that you can use. And Ash Blossom is also level three tuner. It almost never comes up that you'll have to summon it, but hey, it's an option uh, to consider uh, when you're choosing your hand traps. Obviously, things like Effect Veiler, things like Ghost Ogre also work as well. Just you know, pick hand traps based on whatever your local regional meta is like. All right, so that does it for all the monsters. Next off, we're going to go into the spell cards. Okay, guys, so for the spell cards, starting off, we're playing three copies of Speed Recovery. Now, this is like the monster reborn for the Speedroid archetype. You can just target one Speedroid monster in your graveyard and special summon it, which is fantastic. It's also one of the reasons why I run one copy of Double Yo-Yo now, because Speed Recovery is uh, essentially the same thing. Now, it's important to note that Speed Recovery also has a graveyard effect where you can banish it and just add a Speedroid monster from your graveyard back to your hand, as long as it's not the turn that was sent to the graveyard. So this is actually really nice because uh, you can recover things things like your double yo-yos, terror tops, uh, horse stilts, anything else that you might potentially need for your second turn. Um, it's really good for recovering advantage and then being able to make follow-up plays. Okay, so next off, we're running three copies of Twin Twisters. Originally, I wasn't playing any spell and trap removal in this deck, but I found 
wow, the back row really, really hurts, especially if you're trying to play through it and you're going second, which uh, this deck can do because we do have combo potential. Now, Twin Twisters here, fantastic for just setting up your graveyard. You can discard things like your Speed Roy Tuners that you have extras of um, so that Double Yo-Yo Speed Recovery can revive them. There's a lot of utility with this card, and I just find that, hey, the discard really doesn't matter as long as you're popping your opponent's back row, clearing the board, and opening the way for you to make your own plays. Now, I found that in this format, there's a lot more back row floodgates being played to try to slow the game state down, stop the opponent from doing things, and Twin Twisters is just an easy way, a consistent way, of uh, outing those cards that might be problematic for you. Okay, so moving on, we're also playing two copies of Called by the Grave. This should be very obvious why. Uh, being a synchro deck, you're more of a combo-oriented deck, and so you don't want your opponent's Ash Blossoms, Effect Veilers, and things like that to stop you in your track. So uh, Called by the Grave at two copies, because it's only legal at two, um, I found to be just fantastic. All right, so moving on, we have three more spell cards that we play in the main deck, and they are one copy of Foolish Burial, one copy of Monster Reborn, and one copy of Miracle Synchro Fusion. This is like my secret little tech in this deck, and it's been coming in clutch for me in so many situations. So Foolish Burial is here. Obviously, send your tuners to the graveyard. It's fantastic. You can send things like Terra Top if you have a Speed Recovery or Double Yo-Yo in your hand as well, just to get those searches, get the Terra Top into circulation, which is fantastic. Monster Reborn, great for bringing back your Synchro monster. So if you Synchro climbed using things like Clearwing Synchro Dragon, or let's just say your Crystal Wing got destroyed somehow, or your opponent got over it, Monster Reborn is there to help bring it back. And the Miracle Synchro Fusion is here for you to allow you to access your Wind Witch Fusion that's in your extra deck. And Wind Witch Fusion is absolutely amazing. Wind Witch uh, Crystal Bell is her name. Uh, but we'll get into that when we get into the extra deck. But just keep in mind that this card is so, so clutch. Only one, though, because uh, if you play multiples, it's not going to be live. I only play one copy of the fusion, but uh, Miracle Synchro Fusion, if you top deck it uh, late game when you're out of resources, this card just puts you right back in the duel. Um, it's really, really clutch. All right, guys, so that does it for the main deck. Next off, we're going to go into the extra deck. Okay, so for the extra deck, starting off, we are playing one copy of Cleefort Genius. Now, Speedroids are all machine-type monsters, which is fantastic, because it gives you access to this card right here. And not only does it have, you know, bottom left, bottom right arrows, which is ideal for a deck that likes to access this extra deck a lot and put a bunch of synchro monsters on board, but Cleefort Genius has a great effect where you can just target one card that you control, one card your opponent controls, and negate their effects for the rest of the turn. And uh, Genius is also unaffected by your op opponent's spell and trap cards and your opponent's link monsters as well so it's actually a really decent card to go ahead and summon as long as you haven't activated things like Takatom Borg or your Wind Witch monsters which restricts you to only wind monsters um, but Cleavor Genius can help you shut down floodgates, help you shut down problematic monsters. Um, it can even, uh, it can really screw your opponent over if they don't read its effect, where it can't be affected by link monsters and things like that as well. So Genius allows you to out boars that you potentially couldn't uh, if you didn't have its amazing negation effect. Okay, so next off, we're playing two copies of Great Fly, obviously because this deck is very wind-oriented, and um, because you have so many cards that lock you into the wind attribute, like your Wind Witch Engine, like your Takatown Borgs, uh, Great Fly is just fantastic because you can still access it uh, if you're using the effect of something like Takatown Borg, uh, and it allows you to, again, bottom left, bottom right arrows, you can summon multiple extra deck monsters out and then push for more damage. It's also great because it floats, it can help you add back your, um, your wind monsters from your graveyard to your hand. If if this is destroyed by battle or by your opponent's card effect. Okay, so next off we have uh, one copy of Borlo Dragon and one copy of Boral Sword Dragon. Now originally I wasn't playing Boral Sword Dragon, but I realized really quickly uh, that this card is just absolutely insane in this deck. You can pump out a lot of monsters with the help of things like Double Yo-Yo, Horse Stills, Denden, Daigo, Duke, and things like that. Of course, Garuda coming in clutch there as well, putting that extra body on board in case you're lacking another body to go for the Link 4 summons. Now Borlode is just here to help you steal your opponent monsters, great for outing uh, certain boards, but Boral Sword allows you to push for damage and go for OTKs, uh, which is really important in this deck because you don't really want to stall too much. If you have a Crystal Wing in your extra monster zone, it's okay to let go of it, link summon away with it, put more things on board, and Boral Sword is a way to easily OTK your opponent on your turn uh, by using whatever resources you have on your side of the field. Just end the game quickly because I found that Wind Witches tend to, um, the Speedroid Wind Witch deck tends to 
have a difficult time finishing the opponent off uh, if you're just relying on the Crystal Wing in the extra monster zone, right? You only have one boss monster, and it's usually not enough damage to push for a game. So, uh, Boral Sword definitely coming in clutch here. Highly recommend it in this build. Okay, so that does it for the Link Monsters. Next off, we're going to go into the Synchros that we play. So starting off, we're of course playing one copy of High Speed Roy Chambara. Great for the OTKs, great for pushing for damage, or just even clearing your opponent's board out, which is awesome. Now we also play one copy of Starish Charge Warrior. This card doesn't come up as often as, say, things like Chambara, but uh, Charge Warrior is great because it gives you an extra draw, and if your opponent has a lot of weak special summon monsters, uh, Starish Charge Warrior can easily clear out your opponent's board there as well. So kind of filling like a same niche as Chambara would while giving you some extra uh, cards to work with. Next off, we're playing a defensive synchro in the form of uh, F.A. Dawn Dragster. Now, Dawn Dragster is fairly easy to summon in, in this deck because it's a level 7 synchro. Uh, so things like double yo-yo plus a level 3 tuner or just, uh, you know, horse stills plus a level 3 tuner uh, is a really easy way to access this. Uh, the reason I put this in here is it can negate spell and trap cards. Crystal Wing can, of course, deal with all the monster effects your opponent has. But this is just a way to help protect your board from spells and traps and to just hinder your opponent's, like, searching capabilities and things like that as well. So next off, we're also playing one copy of Wind Witch Winter Bell, uh, obviously, because you need the Winter Bell in order to summon your Crystal Bell, so Miracle Synchro Fusion has to banish this card from your graveyard. So if you're going first and you don't really know what your opponent's playing, I would summon the Winter Bell first and then use that to climb into your Crystal Wing, instead of, say, something like your Clear Wing Synchro Dragon, which you should preserve for uh, once you get to know what your opponent's playing, right? Uh, this card's actually pretty decent to climb into your uh, Crystal Wing with if, for example, your opponent's playing something like ABCs, where they have Dragon Buster already on the field, you can summon your Clear Wing Synchro Dragon first, and they can't target this with, your, with their ABC Dragon Buster, right? Or else you're just going to negate the effect anyway. So it gives you some protection while climbing into your Crystal Wing, so I would save it for when you actually needed it, whereas Winter Bell is just a fantastic, free, easy, first turn, um, go ahead and summon, uh, and then send to the Graveyard to Synchro Climb with. Alright, so that does it for that handful of synchros right there. Next off, moving on, uh, we have one copy of Clearing Fast Dragon. Now, Clearing Fast Dragon, I don't have a copy of it right now, but proxying it here. Uh, Clearing Fast Dragon is fantastic because it allows you to go ahead and get over large extra deck monsters. You can target an extra deck monster your opponent controls, uh, negate its effects, and change its attack to zero, which allows you to basically run over it with any of your monsters, which is a really versatile uh, thing to have in your extra deck. Now next off, I'm also running one copy of Stardust Dragon because sometimes you do need to be able to access a level 8 Synchro that's not your Crystal Wing, which we're playing two copies of by the way, um, because the fact that Crystal Wing needs a Synchro monster along with a tuner in order to summon, but Stardust Dragon is just very generic. Um, Stardust Dragon doesn't really come up too often at all, but it's just nice to have the option of going into in case you need something to help protect your board, like if you know your opponent has a follow-up play where they have destruction-based cards effects that are going to potentially uh, clear or wipe out your field. So yeah, that does it for all these synchro monsters. And the last card in the extra deck is going to be the ace in this deck. We're playing one copy of Wind Witch Crystal Bell. Now Crystal Bell is only summoned through your Miracle Synchro Fusion, but you don't have to play this if you don't want to. I just find it really fun. Uh, it's just a little tech that I put in. It's very similar to Supreme King Dragon Starving Venom's effect, uh, if you're familiar with that. So if this card is on your side of the field, you can activate its effect to target one monster in either player's graveyard, and it just copies his effect for the turn. And Crystal Bell can easily copy something like your Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon in your graveyard. Uh, if you wanted to attack multiple times with this card, uh, you can easily copy something like a uh, High Spear or Chambara, which is fantastic. Uh, 2800 attack on the Crystal Bell, which means with Chambara, it can reach up to 3200 attack points fairly easily. Um, and with the help of something like a Great Fly on your side of the field as well, Crystal Bell becomes a really surprisingly difficult monster to deal with, especially if your opponent's on the defensive and you're just going ahead and swinging for game. So yeah, anyway, that does it for the extra deck, and that does it for the deck profile. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please leave a like, subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content, and leave a comment down below letting me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.